for me, I work best right to left and then top to down. Maybe somebody, some of you will feel more comfortable working left to right and building from the bottom up. But for me, it's again, right to left, top to down. Your first square, put your tie off tail, the longest tail, in the upper right hand corner. Start with your tie on knot tail in the lower left hand corner facing down. Your tie off tail will be in the upper right hand corner. Now you could still have your tie off tail in the upper right hand corner, but your knot tie on knot tail could be in the lower left hand corner but facing out. Um, it won't ruin a project. It just makes it a little bit trickier connecting the loops. Um, but ideally, you want your tie-on knot tail in the lower left-hand corner facing down, your tie-off tail in the upper right-hand corner. I'd work my squares, as I said, from right to left, top to down. That seems to work for me. Now, you have a loop here. You go through it. Then you come back through that same loop and go to the next loop down. So you're kind of working in a zigzag stitch. I pull, snug them up, and again, next loop on the other side, and then down. Pull it nice. Surprisingly, they're very durable once they're connected. Back and forth at a slant. Notice that this yarn is a warp yarn. On this side, don't run your darning needle through that. That is not to be connected. You're only connecting the loops or the bumps, as they're also called. Again, you're just back and forth. Back and forth. Now, down at the end, these loops can become a little bit distorted on the end. Take this loop, go here, and then go around the same again. Turn it over, then run your needle just in and out, back up, weave. If you do felt, you can felt these squares either by hand at the kitchen sink, or you can Make your 500 squares and put them in laundry net bags and toss them in the machine. And they can be felted individually in the machine or connected into however many rows you want. Snip close without snipping your weaving. That would not make you a happy camper. Now you've got your tie on tails. I don't use my tie-on tails to connect my squares. I just weave them in. You have an odd loop here. That's the way it is in weaving. There's, there's nothing, you haven't done anything wrong. 
I just come up and again you just weave in and out over and under all the way up there's no actual right or wrong side I haven't found the right or wrong side and again you snip close without snipping the weaving and I'll weave these in really fast here again you have this odd little bump you just weave in and out one of the vintage pattern books says that you can make a bedspread for 400 and some odd squares and that would be fine that would be quite a heavy weight of material you can cross stitch on your squares you can embroider embellish with buttons and ribbon now when you connect your strips, as I said, I connect top down. This would be, if I was, were making, say, a table runner or an afghan, this would be my starting corner. You want to connect, make sure that your seams mesh. So you're starting this loop. And you go here and once again you're just going straight across if you run out of yarn just weave in the loose tail cut a, whatever type of yarn you're, you want coordinating yarn weave it in in the direction you want to go and just start weaving again that's why you want to allow yourself plenty of yarn when you're wrapping around your loom so you can see that it's just again it's just kind of a zigzag stitch you can also crochet the squares together and you just keep going till you get to the end Now, I like to see I got this. There are two little odd ones, and I like to connect those. That will absolutely pinpoint your seams. And then you just keep Just remember not to connect your straight lines, your warp threads. And just keep going to the end and then connect the corners and weave under. So this afternoon we have talked about Blue Butterfly Original Hand Looms and the different techniques that can be achieved with them. We worked with warping, weaving, popping off and connecting variegated pattern yarn squares. You can see the difference between unfelted and the felted techniques that can be achieved. Two by two that were hand felted down to teeny tiny inches. Different yarns will produce different effects. You can warp and weave with ribbon. You can combine ribbon with wool yarn and felt. This was a four by four Lion Brand Alpine wool, roving yarn, hand felted. Lovely nubby texture. This is a wannabe centipede was warped on the two by um, six loom and then just woven straight across with roving and hand felted. 
a lighter, nubby, textured feel. You can double warp and weave. Remember, in the world of fiber, nobody's done it all. You'll think of things to do and new techniques, new projects. Um, the sky's the limit with Blue Butterfly Hand Looms. Thanks a lot. Thank you.